Kingsford, the all-American charcoal for the all-American holiday. There's a fire sale going down in South Florida, guys. Former Dolphins executive Mike Tannenbaum joins us now. You know, Coach Flores is saying all the right things to the media, but some think the Dolphins are waving the white flag this season. Uh, Damian, should the Dolphins players be upset after these moves? Absolutely. Listen, it, it, there's two different things going on here. You have the front office who clearly is looking towards the future, but as a veteran player, all you're concerned about is the here and now, okay? You're concerned about trying to win football games because ultimately winning football games helps secure, you know, help secure your contract and your future moving forward. So as a player, you're sitting in the locker room thinking, okay, we just trade, we just trade away maybe the best young left tackle in the game, a productive wide receiver in Kenny Stills. You're seeing all these guys leaving the, leaving the organization. So as a veteran player, you think to yourself, are we really trying to win here? Okay, veteran players aren't concerned about two, three years down the road. Veteran players are concerned in how do we win week one? How do we win week four? They're not concerned about the moves that the teams are, you know, draft picks that the teams are acquiring because we don't even know if those draft picks are going to really help the team or not. I think that's exactly right. I think there's a careful balancing act here because there's really two different silos from a front office standpoint. Obviously, they're preparing for the future. They've accumulated a lot of draft capital in all likelihood to go ahead and try to get a quarterback either next year or the following year's draft. With that said, I agree with what Damien said. You have to win for today and develop for tomorrow. And if you listen to what Coach Flory said, his point is like, look, we're going to work really hard. Coach is Steve Wilkes in Arizona, Hugh Jackson in Cleveland, and Todd Bowles of the Jets. All three of those guys start rookie quarterbacks in what they thought was the first year of a long-term plan. All three were let go. So that's certainly part of the NFL's ecosystem in 2019. And Brian Flores got this job because he's hardworking, he's competitive, and those traits aren't going to change. They're going to work hard this week. They'll have a game plan ready to go. They got Baltimore. It's a home opener. And that's his charge is to get his team ready to go. So, again, there's a somewhat of two different audiences here. And I agree with Damian. The veteran players, they're going to do everything they can to try to win right now. No, the player shouldn't be upset because this is the price of doing business in the NFL. Like, look, if, if this is not caught off guard, we were just having the same conversation about the Raiders. And I agree. Like, that these are the processes you go through when you haven't had success. And we're talking about the veterans wanting to win now. When the last time the Dolphins won? Like, I, I don't know if, if, if these three players that they traded away was going to make a large difference in these veterans going to the playoffs and possibly winning the Super Bowl or not. So, I, I like, being upset, we've been around, obviously, you might have been in contract negotiations. Woody, you played in the league forever. You know, I, I understand where you guys are coming from. But this is what the NFL is. It's business. It is, it, as a player, you are subject to whatever the culture and the climate of this league is, especially when it pertains to your, to your organization or your franchise. So, yeah, I get uh, hypothetically what you're saying, and it feels good to everybody to say, hey, man, we, we, we I'm upset. We traded away our – Young players and all, all of that. Um, man, these dudes, they got a job. They happy they got a job. And, and with that being said, they know the price of doing business in the NFL, and they wasn't going to win anyway. Well, well wait. What? The other thing it does, too, if you're a, <laughs> if you're a veteran yeah, player, back, I'm coming. if you're a player on this team, it also creates an opportunity. They, they could win six, seven games, and there could be a lot of guys that step up and play that are unexpected. Brian Flores may do an excellent job this year, and that creates a lot of opportunity. And, Damon, you touched on like the contract situation. There'll be a lot of these guys that have now a better opportunity to make more money, show what they can do. So one door closes, another open. And who I'm talking about specifically, Josh Rosen. At some point, Josh Rosen's going to get on the field, and we're going to see what he can do because if he plays well, that may change the whole narrative of this franchise. If I'm in that front office, I need to know what I have in that player because if he plays well, now I have all this other draft capital and now I can get this team going in the right direction. A little bit quicker, Marcus, I know you have your concerns here, but just imagine if they have a winning quarterback in Josh Rose and what they may be able to do in a year.
Mike, what does it mean for Josh that uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick was named a starter? I was a little surprised, candidly, about that because, again, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and we've talked about this before, is your quintessential veteran quarterback where you could put him on, you could take him off, and he's been in every situation. Uh, he's very competent. He's good for your locker room. I thought Josh Rosen played well in the preseason. He's getting coached by guys like Chad O'Shea, who coached Tom Brady in New England, so it's an excellent offensive staff in Miami. And I was a little surprised that Josh Rosen wasn't named the starter. And, again, I would think at some point during the 2019 season, they'll know what they have in Josh Rosen. So if we were having this conversation in January, they'll know a lot more about the team, which, which players are nucleus, uh, part of the nucleus, Christian Wilkins, Mika Fitzpatrick, some of those young defensive players. But on the other side of the ball, they need to know what they have in Josh Rosen. Man, let, let, me, let me get back to Marcus real quick because Marcus just, you know, that answer you gave me, Marcus, was just, man, I, I'm, I, man you, made me, you made me upset with that because I didn't expect that from you. You mean Go to ahead. tell me going into a season, everybody, Everybody's optimistic. Everybody's 0-0. Zero, zero. It's a clean slate going into the season. And right before the season, you mean to tell me you wouldn't feel some type of way when you're one of your best, maybe not your best player, and Laramie Tunsil gets traded away, another wide receiver gets traded away. You mean to tell me that you would not feel some type of way in your mind it would just be, oh, this is just business as usual? Going into a long 16-game season? Is that what you're trying to? Is that what you're trying to sell to me right now? Would 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 maybe I'm conditioned. Let, let, yeah, let's be real. Maybe maybe I'm conditioned to all of the things that I saw transpire in the NFL, but being upset when you trying to I was talking about what you guys said. Justifiably, I understand where you coming from, but being upset is really to me trying to swim backwards, man. Like, we know that the NFL is this. Now, if I talk about being upset, I, I can point one guy, one or two guys, all right, that I'll agree with you and Mike on. If I'm Fitzgerald, if I'm Fitzpatrick, and if I'm Josh Rosen, I'm pissed off that Laramie Thompson gone because I might get <laughs> yeah, my back that, yeah, knocked that's loose. Right. But other than that, other than that, man, look, you have to be, when you're a veteran, right, like you were, Woody, like you saw, all of these transactions take place. Dude, being upset is almost like being a baby when you see this type of stuff happen because it happens every day. And I'll tell you this, though. There are other players on offense. This team has some playmakers when you look at Kalen Balaj at running back, Kenyon Drake, Albert Wilson's coming off of injury, Jakeem Grant, who's really a returner, but he can make plays on the offensive side of the ball. Devontae Parker, if he can stay healthy, he is a good receiver. So they moved on from Kenny Stills, but there are players that can make plays on that side of the ball. We drafted two tight ends there last year and Mike Kosecki and, and Duran Smythe. So, again, at some point, I'm excited as a fan of the sport. What does Josh Rosen have? And who knows, maybe he plays a lot better than people expect. And, again, the NFL has become a week-to-week -week sport. Two weeks ago, Indianapolis with Andrew Luck was the favorite. Now you could say Houston with... Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills are, are a much improved team. And maybe six weeks from now, we're talking about a young Josh Rose and playing better than ex, you know, expectations. We shall see. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Yeah, good luck between these two. <laughs> <laughs> we got a battle of the big men today. <laughs> All right, still to come, Andy Reid. is bringing in one of his former stars. But how much will LaShawn McCoy actually contribute?